Hey y'all, uh, my name is Diraj Bendaru, and today I want to talk to you about how you can connect your front end directly to an Azure SQL database without needing a back end. So quickly before we get started, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Diraj Bandaru. I am currently a product manager for Azure Static Web Apps. I'm super excited to talk to y'all today about what Azure Static Web Apps is and what it does. Um, our feature, Database Connections, which allows you to connect directly to um, a wide number of databases that are hosted in Azure. And then a quick demo of how it actually all looks in production. So to get started, Azure Static Web Apps is Azure's premier front-end hosting offering. Um, we offer two plans right now. We offer the free plan, which is obviously free, and then a standard plan, which is $9 a month. The database connections feature that I am referring to is actually available on both of these plans. Some of the key features that make it so awesome to host front ends on Azure Static Web Apps include our managed CI CD with GitHub Actions and Azure DevOps support. We also offer built in authentication. And then we offer managed deployment of back end serverless functions. Additionally, we offer these easy connections to databases and easy connections to other back ends as well. Not with managed deployment, but just linking them. We can link to Azure Container Apps, App Service, APIM, and other functions. So what is database connections? Um, to put it simply, it's the simplest way in all of Azure to connect a database to your web app. How simple is it? This is code uh, taken from the demo that I will show you in about uh, a couple minutes here to list all of the entries in this particular table. Um, it's four lines. All you have to do really is connect to this endpoint that we provide called data-api, and you can list out all the values in your Azure SQL database on your front end. It's really that simple. So database connections is a configuration-based setup. The database connection sets up a connection to your Azure database securely using um, Azure security, and you're able to build something like what you see in the picture here with those five um, functionalities available to you and your front end. So let's go ahead and get into the demo. I have a very simple demo set up here today to go over what this all looks like. Let me bring the code over. So here we have some code for an app.js. So taking a look at what that front end React code really looks like, um, we have the following content, static web apps database connections. We have our five functionalities all listed out here as buttons that users can click on in order to get that functionality. Below, I have those functions written out. Um, so again, the first one we have is list. I have my endpoint as data-api, rest, and then I want my person table from this database that I've set up in the portal. I want to make sure that I get that data back um, as a JSON so that I can go ahead and list it, and I output this content to a console. But obviously, once you get back that content, you can list it wherever you want within your front end. Similarly, I have my get um, function here. I'm going to fetch using that endpoint and ID, and then I have that response returned to me as a JSON. The update functionality I have is a little bit hard-coded just for this demo. I'm specifically updating ID number four to say have the name Molly instead of whatever the name originally was. And I have my endpoint again. Here I have a put uh, method that sends a JSON with that data. And again, I'm outputting the result that this all worked in a table in my console. Last two here, we got create. It's another functionality that's available to you with database connections. That's a post method. You post that data up. 
delete. That's a delete method. And you again can log all of that in your console. So the reason I'm starting with this is from a code standpoint, this is the, these are the changes you have to make to your front end code in order to accept um, the database connection. This is pretty much all the code you will need to write in order to connect to any database, as opposed to having to maintain your whole backend, maintain the security on that traffic, as well as a number of other considerations that you'd have to do generally with database connections, this is all you got to do. And then to actually connect to your live database, we have this file right here called the dlap.database.config.json. One of the advantages for it being all configuration based is instead of having to worry about how I'm doing this securely and if anything changes with my database, how do I update my code? It's all in one place here in my config file. So you can see here, the schema we're using is from uh, Data API Builder. The database type set as MS SQL because today we're going over how to connect to an Azure SQL database. And then we have my connection string, which I have in my environment, REST, GraphQL endpoints. I'm allowing localhost 4280 because the SWAT emulator, um, which I'll go over in a second, allows me to test all of this locally. And I think that's really huge because being able to test a connection um, to my live database without actually having to deploy saves me a lot of time, especially in this particular instance. Um, and the SWA CLI really allows you to do that with database connections. Provider, static web apps, entities. This is where you have to customize it to your particular table. I have my person table and I have permission set to anonymous. As I said earlier, Azure Static Web Apps offers a really neat feature that allows you to authenticate people um, built in to the platform itself. So for example here, if I had my role as authenticated instead of anonymous, only authenticated users would be able to access this particular entity and do these sort of operations, which is extremely useful because you don't want anyone touching your production database. Um, how you set up that uh, authentication is, again, it can be config-based with a little bit of code. Um, all of that information is on the Azure Static Web Apps documentation page. Um, so if anyone's interested in finding out exactly how easy setting up built-in auth is for Static Web Apps, you can go ahead and take a look there. But yeah, maybe some of you are wondering, how do I even get to this stage? How do I get this config file? And that's where Static Web Apps CLI really comes into play. So the Static Web Apps CLI I have here running in my terminal is used to set up uh, local emulation. We have a couple key commands. Uh, SWADB init is the one I kind of want to talk about, which I've already done, obviously, because it created this folder structure. But if I were to create, if I were to use SWADB init now, what that would generate is it would generate this folder, SWADB connections, and in it, this static web app database config.json file, which is used to actually connect to my live database. Um, and it's just one command, generates the schema for me. I can go ahead and fill it out in whatever way I feel necessary. For example, I can put in my own entities. I can put in my own connection string. I can allow different things through my cores, etc. Once all of that is done, I can go ahead and test if this works or not before I even ever deploy to static web apps. Uh, obviously, I would have had to have set up a SQL, uh, Azure SQL instance in um, Azure already, but that's separate from this process. So with SWA start data API location SWADB connections, um, I'm able to see this. Couple notes on this particular command. I will say um, SWA init needs to happen because you need to initialize your SWA. Um, that creates this SWA CLI config JSON file, which is another file which just basically allows the emulator to understand how to actually run and build your app. After that SWA build needs to be ran. Um, and this will allow 
the emulator again to actually have the build artifacts. All of this can we've summarized into one macro. If you just type in SWA, it will run all the commands necessary all the way up until deployment. And then it will give you a choice of whether you want to deploy or not deploy. Um, in this particular case, I would say I don't want to deploy. Then I would run SWA start with the API location as SWA DB connections. So I already have this running just to save myself a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So first, I want to show you localhost 5000. This is the port on which the managed data API builder is currently running. You can see here, status healthy. We're using DAB OSS 1.319, and that all looks good. Next, let's go to 4280. This is where our entire app is currently running. if it'll load. <laughs> but what this will essentially do is it'll pull up that app that was shown in the picture and we can run through it. Let's go ahead and click that. And there it is. So here, this is running locally on my machine. Let's go ahead and open up the console, just to see what that looks like. So currently there's nothing in the console. console. Let's go ahead and click list. You can see here, this is everything we have in our database right now, that person table. Um, I got four Pedros, all with different IDs. Just to check if that's actually what we have in the database, I'm gonna go to my portal. I have my data set up here. Let's go ahead and go to the editor. I'm going to log in using my login and password. And I have my table here. I'm going to go ahead and select my top down entries. I'm going to run this. And you can see here. In my live deployed Azure SQL database, I have these four entries. In my local testing, I have the same entries. Um, let's go ahead and get ID number three. And that's Pedro, that's correct. If you remember, the update function in this demo is hard coded to change whichever um, instance is at four to Molly. So let's go ahead and do that. It responded with that. Let's go ahead and see the list. And you can see now ID number four is Molly. So this is how we're able to do this locally. Uh, and it just makes my inner loop development a lot better, um, a lot faster, because I don't have to deploy every single time I want to make an update um, to my front end application. I can just check whether it's happening or not. Just to confirm that this actually changed the live server, we can go ahead and run this command again. And you can see here, Molly appears in number four. And this is, again, my live database that I'm running for my local instance. So now that we've tested that everything works as planned, we're going to go ahead and deploy this to Azure Static Web Apps and link it to our Azure SQL database in production. I'll go ahead and show y'all what that looks like. I already have it deployed here. Again, this was my URL to the Azure Static Web App. If I go to dash uh, data dash API, you can see that it's running, it's healthy, and this is what my React app looks like once deployed. We can go ahead and get that list here and see, boom, there we have it. We have all of the same instances, um, entries, as we did in the local running version, and it all works just as expected.
So how did I do this? When I was in my terminal, the command I would have ran after SWA start was SWA deploy. That would have taken me to that URL, the agreeable water URL. I can also go to the portal and check in my static web app resource. You can see I can find my URL here. One thing to note is with the database connection, in order to officially set up the production link, we also need to go to the portal, go down to the da settings, database connections tab, and we need to take an action here. This does not automatically get linked. We need to go ahead and click link existing database. I've already linked my database here and that's why it already exists, but you can see below from my preview environment, it's asking me to link a database. Let's see if this loads. If not, let me go ahead and close that. Let me go ahead and click this so that I can run through some of those options. But yeah, generally on this uh, pop-out, side pop-out, what we see are some options to select the databases that are available in your resource group or in your subscription. And then we're given a couple different authentication methods. Um, this includes using Azure identities as well as a connection string. Ah, so it finally loaded here. Let's go ahead and click Azure SQL resource group. I'm going to go to my resource group. I'm going to go to my name. This is my resource group. My sample database. And so yeah, here we have authentication type and we have a connection string. So you would just input your username and password and then you'd be connected. The other database types that are available with this particular feature include Postgres, MySQL, and Cosmos DB. Just to see what that looks like, um, once finalized, you can see here, once deployed, it does get access to that database.config.json file to make the rest of the setup a breeze, but this manual setup will be necessary every time you want to connect a static web app to a database once deployed. But yeah, that is Azure Static Web Apps uh, and Azure SQL and how easy it is to make all of that happen. Let me go ahead and pull up my slides again here. So it really is that simple. Um, that demo I just ran through is actually our quick start. Um, and so if you wanted to go and use that yourself, you can go ahead and find it on learn.microsoft.com, Azure Static Web Apps, look under the database connections um, tab, and then look under tutorials and you'll find all of our tutorials there. Um, and yeah, it's just really easy to use um, and hopefully really powerful um, for a lot of devs moving forward. Other things, um, if you want to get a certification to develop data-driven applications using Microsoft Azure SQL databases, you can go ahead and find that at this aka.ms path. And yeah, I appreciate everyone for coming out, listening to my uh, talk here today, and hope uh, y'all have fun coding. Thank you.